I feel bad. I am one of those Zoom people that's like mm-hmm. having a conversation that's important, and it's like, is that? It? <laughs> no, I think pets are important. I try to see souls, you know, not not just like people or what or what people say who who they are, whatever. But like you know, animals, you know, when you look into their eyes and you can connect, like they're trying to communicate with you so much. So it's fun to experience like that connection. It is, and I swear it's not just dogs and cats. Like uh, this is gonna sound insane, and then we'll start talking about real stuff. Oh sure. My daughter just got this little betta fish beta fish Mm -hmm. that thing has so much personality in life and i'm just like because i've had beta fish before and i'm just like okay but this one is just like it's like such a joy i'm like you're such a little fish joy i love you (laughs) we vibe we vibe yeah you're like what in the world you guys talk about animal souls (laughs) (laughs) you're a vegetarian Yes. So you care a little. Yeah, but I don't care about their souls. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> you, you, you're, it's more of a texture thing, huh? No, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm a rice guy. Oh yeah. Hey, nothing wrong with that, man. I've been trying to be better, and that's why. And, I, and we're gonna get started after this. I am buying like myself like all vegetarian meals for work, and like preparing mm-hmm. more vegetarian things. And I'm just like, my stomach is just like, I, I'm just like. Burr. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the side effect of the veggies. Yeah, it definitely gives you a little bit more, um, you know, ammo for um, you know sitting in the car. <laughs> it does. It does. Been with you tonight, and on that note. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. But butter up. No. Ew. What's up, everybody? It's Josh and Jess here with God Hates Unicorns, and we're here with another fantastic round of bands, bands and artists we like and support that aren't as good as God Hates Unicorns, and that's just the name of the show. We're not trying to be mean. We just, that's the name, and that's what, what we've named it's it. That's all we've named. Both of us. Yeah, so, I mean. Well, okay. Anyways, here's the thing. We have Aaron Donald going. We're so excited okay. to have you on. It's going good, going good. Excellent. So, you know, I'm so excited for this one, especially because I feel like a lot of people in our scene maybe don't know who you are yet. Um, and I, I just think this is a good opportunity for everybody to figure that out. Um, well, you get to scoop everybody. Yes, scoop them well, up. Hi, I'm Aristotle. Um, I'm a Sagittarius. <laughs> <laughs> Sagittarius are good. Yeah, hey, I, my birthday. Um, me and Jimi Hendrix share a birthday. It's November twenty seventh, but that's um multiple years apart. Yeah, so that that's all I really my claim to fame. And Bill Nye, the science guy. So. Oh man, okay, well, that's I'm, a I'm, I'm going to start with Bill Nye, but yes, <laughs> <laughs> they're both incredible. Yeah, they're both. I don't know who shares my birthday. Probably I don't want to know. It's probably yeah. Okay. You know, it makes your birthday a little well not it's either going to make it more cool or less cool. So you might as well just maintain that status quo level. Well, maybe you're the coolest person on your birthday. As of right now? People say they have the same birthday as the co-host of God Hates Unicorn. Yeah. People might say that. They don't. They might start. I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, But, um. What's your sign? You know what my sign is. You don't? No. My birthday is like Aries, which nobody likes. You do. Mm, okay. Hmm. Well, obviously. Yeah. I'm fine. I'm actually. I. It's like March 30th, so it's like the. Oh. Your birthday's like, coming up. It is coming up. Hey, hey, hey. I'm, I'm with it. Turn into I'll probably like it's your birthday. <laughs> 21 again for many years in a row. It's 42. It's not 42. <laughs> 38. Douglas Adams and um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. 42 is a good, I mean, I you know, know. You, you'll discover the meaning of life. Okay, but I'm not. I'm going to be 38, everybody. You got something to look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> like 38 is a very unassuming birthday. 38. It's just like I'm flying under the radar. Nothing's happening here. Don't. Yeah. Um, Gemini. Oh, Gemini. Gemini. <laughs> I like how you snuck it in there. <laughs> I love some of it. 
That's what a Gemini would do. That is what a Gemini. That is very Gemini of you. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, at least we don't have cancer. Or cancer. We don't know. Well, there's I, only three of us. I, I bet if we had a few more people, we, we, we would. Could, we could we have would. more friends. Somebody would. Somebody, <laughs> somebody would. Not yet, anyways. We'll see. It runs very rampant in both of our families. But I love your sound. I love what you're doing. And you're making such like a huge scene in your scene. So you're from West Virginia. What was the town again? Uh, well, I, I live in Morgantown, but I grew up um, in Southern West Virginia. So I, I've lived all over the state here. And um, so I, I like to kind of just claim the whole state of West Virginia. It's yours. And you have such a, a big, like, looking at the pictures and listening to the sound, you have a big production. I love, you know, I love that, that genre. And I love the way you have your lyrics and it's just so smooth and you have the horns and you have the big, it's just like a big fun thing. And it, it's my favorite to watch. Well, tell us a little bit about your music. Man, wow, thank you so much for those kind words. But yeah, like big is like, I love the way you encapsulated the whole sound is big because it is a big band. It's a big sound. Um, it, it really stems back to um, a lot of the early to mid 20th century music in the roots. And, um, you know, it's based in gospel and soul and R&B and blues. Um, and, but it's, it's telling the narrative of, of music um, derived from like when I got porch picking with my grandparents and my and my family in West Virginia, you know. So it's it's a soulful expression of folk music, but you know, the arrangement is like your 50s, 60s, 70s Motown soul, but like kind of like a, you know, what you would get if it was in a barn party, you know, as opposed to like going on, on stage. So we really try to bring that authenticity and and energy and realness of like what it would be like to be a soul singer from Appalachia. If, if you were there, you know, like when in kind of because in the mining communities, like the heyday of um, a lot of the towns in, in Appalachia was like when the coal mines were really thriving. And during that time, you know, people were really um, they were doing well. So there was a lot of parties and bars and and, you know, little places to hang out, gathering places and the bands were the main entertainment. And so for the longest time, that's in, in these little communities when there was a band that would come to town, that would be where everybody in town was. And it would just be just such a hot hopping party and it wouldn't really matter what genre it was, you know? And even growing up around West Virginia in like in these still kind of like small towns, we had a lot of free um, music like at fairs and festivals and street, you know, parties. And a lot of that was like bluegrass or country or folk, but that wasn't what I was experiencing when I would go to like, spent time with my family. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, when I was living with my grandfather a few years ago before he passed away, um, he was also a gospel singer. He he said, you know, man, just be yourself, man. You you know what you're doing. You, you have the sound, you know, and I understood it from that, but he was like, you know what, you, you see the vision. Don't, yeah. expect, don't wait for somebody else to get it before you put it out there. And so um, after the pandemic, I said, you know what? I'm not going to be limited by circumstance. I'm not going to let the amount of money I'm getting paid stop me from making the art because once I see the art, then I'll know what it's worth. And so um, it put, it, you know, that allowed me a little bit more freedom to, to be authentic and be a little bit more myself because like I was hearing a sound in my head with me playing acoustic guitar and there was a horn section and there was percussion and there was a piano and, and there's a lot of call and response and, and a lot of syncopated grooves because I grew up listening to that kind of music because that what my parents were listening to and then I you know looked back and I saw artists like um, Bill Withers who's from West Virginia um, I learned about Johnny Johnson who was um he was the Johnny and Johnny Be Good and he was from Fairmont um that's just like 10 miles away from where I'm at now um I learned about like my grandfather's band and then the um kind of the whole Chitlin circuit where a lot of um, artists from the South and the North would stop in West Virginia because there were pockets of Black um, farmers and pockets of Black coal miners, so they could stop off and play here. So we had, like, mega stars that would come and play in, in rural communities. And so learning about all this, 
it actually gave me as an Appalachian a, a stake in in my history that I was not really I didn't have access to because a lot in order for a lot of people to make it like especially like you know black members of the Appalachian community to have a place where they could really thrive and be successful they would have to leave mm -hmm. the rural community to go to a city so a lot of the music that we associate being um, created in like the bigger cities came from rural populations those artists that were inspired by gospel, blues, acoustic music, and singing about folk music and love in the midst of struggle, that came from these rural Black populations. And then they were, whenever they got to the cities, like Detroit or St. Louis or Chicago or Philadelphia, then they were able to have enough people for that to reach the mainstream. So what type of music I played really just is a throwback in a lot of ways to that time. Um, before like everybody had to leave and go do something else just and, and, it, and it brings it forward and talks about what it's like to be a West Virginian in the 21st century as well yeah and I that is such a much better explanation of your music than mine <laughs> I, I well, don't I, always have a way with words but one thing that I can say about your music is those influences are so strong in it it also is like such an original you like there's so much like of this you hear all of that but there's this other like just fresh like you could tell it's it's so you too it, it's also oh, thank you so much <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of fun to make you know and and also it's like I was I've always been a songwriter like from like a little kid before I even really realized what that was I would sit out like the bus stop and just make up songs waiting on my bus mm -hmm. and so like it was just one of those things that connected with me. I just thought it was normal. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I'm just happy to share that with anybody that'll listen. So thank you so much for everything you're saying. Oh yeah, I, it's absolutely true. And I hope that this is gonna generate more people to listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> I think I like to soul music is one of those sounds. Like soul music itself is really fun. Like, so who doesn't like Motown, right? Who doesn't like the records that came out of Stacks, you know, Otis Redding and, and all, you know, even like 90s r and is fun, you know, like there's a lot of really cool um, sounds in there and harmonies. And, but what's really cool about what I do is I, because I would grew up around like a lot of these bluegrass singers, mm -hmm. um, I realized that the harmonies that they're doing and the songs that they're doing are literally the same songs I was singing in church with my family. Mm -hmm. We were just singing them different styles, so I really love to blend those together and um, and create a new, not a new genre, but like a genre that pays homage to both of those and with a new palette can paint a picture with a new palette and perspective. Yeah, yeah. People don't realize like there's only a finite number of like rhythms and melodies in the world. Yes, and it's it's awesome when you hear a crossover and you could actually pick up as an artist and be like you know what this blends perfectly together. Oh wow. You know, I, I love the fact that you said that because honestly, it's like I try to keep it fundamentally simple, um, not just to talk in the weeds, any, but I think melodies are great. And, I, and, and so like I love to whistle and do stuff like that. So things that are just like earworms, I love to throw hooks and melodies in there. And when you, I mean, I listen to a lot of different music. When I was um, probably about 21, I'm, I'm in my 40s too, I won't talk about it. <laughs> so, um, when I was 21, I had a CD wallet, and um, and it got stolen. So I mean, if you remember a CD wallet, like you had like everything, you could just tote it around with you, yes. you curating your particular life in this in this CD wallet, and I mean, it'd be thousands of dollars worth of CDs. And somebody broke into my house and they stole my CD wallet. And so all the music I was listening to, like from the um, early 90s, which was like Boys to Men and Silk and Shy and and like, I mean, I could go into detail I've all for Silk in forever. I've yeah, heard Silk in forever. Really, you know what I mean? Like, and those had these very, really rich layered, you know, back backing harmonies and stacked vocals. And I was like, man, I'm going to be an R&B singer. But then, you know, like hip hop kind of started going the mainstream. And then, you know, everybody's trying to rap. So so I was like, oh, man, I'll be like a rapper. And I got a keyboard. And I was like, you know, I don't really play piano. I'm not, I don't know how to play piano. You know what I mean? Like, but my friend, that gave me a guitar about the same time. And guitar really just came a lot more naturally to me because I had been around 
a lot of guitar players. Mm -hmm. And so um, from the moment I got the guitar, I just started writing songs. Songs just started pouring out of me. And, but the style wasn't, um, I didn't quite understand the styles because I wasn't, like you said, as a musician, there's only so many notes. You can do a lot of stuff. Yeah. But when you're hearing reggae styles and, and R&B styles and bluegrass styles, I would put them right next to each other, like juxt juxtapose. So I'd have a song kind of be like, kind of like math rock. You'd be like, all right, it's eight bars of this. Now, eight bars of this style. Now, eight bars of this style. Um, and that was cool. Nobody was really doing that at the time. But like over a course of several different bands and projects and, and being a solo artist for a while, like I was able to start merging those in a natural blending. And two, you got to play with a really high caliber level of um, musicians that have awareness of those genres. Because um, like I've played with um, some musicians that maybe didn't have a grasp of like hip hop beats. Mm -hmm. And um, and I don't mean, but it's, it's, I don't use per se hip hop beats, but I use break beat style um, drums. Um, and so, because I listen to a lot of funk music and that's where the hip hop beats came from, you know, originally. So, um, so if you didn't have a real grasp of how to use that style, it was, it was a little bit harder. And so we had to find a language to translate where he understood things like um, red hot chili peppers, mm -hmm. right? You know, so like, and so it becomes kind of crafting a language with, language with musicians because it's all coming back to like the fundamentals of, um, of, of, God, of, of black music. I mean, not to specifically, you know, delineate race, but from the spirituals to the church, from the church to soul, jazz, blues, um, and then maintaining gospel, then you get down to um, rock and roll and funk and all these all these deline delineations of music that are stemming from the same source. Mm -hmm. So really, when you get down to it, it's really only what it's percussion. It's not even notes. It's rhythms and syncopation and like James Brown, you know. And so that's where um, a lot of my music lies. Sorry to get so in the weeds, but man, you, you, you asked yeah. me a good question. <laughs> put on our jeans and get in those weeds. Because... Yeah, and it's fun for the audience. And you know, that's what, something I worried about for a long time was, um, I was like, well, man, nobody's making any sounds like me. Like, where is this gonna fit in? Um, and so I've been blessed recently with artists like uh, Bruno Mars, Anderson Pack doing some, some really innovative, you know, stuff with Silk Sonic, but even before that, like Anderson Pack working with Dr. Dre and working with Smokey Robinson and, and even going back to like his first album when, or earlier album where he was doing really like The Bird, um, where it was like this really jazzy blended thing or listen to like the raps with like dilated people and how, or like Q-Tip or how it'd be kind of like scat and jazzy. Mm -hmm. um, and it, they were blending new styles of music over older styles of um, performances. And, and then like hearing um, kind of the contemporary trajectory of country music where um, where there's a lot more roots soul in it now and so we end up with artists like Chris Stapleton or Zach Brown or like the War and Treaty now and or um, Marcus King band that kind of have this blend over this blending sound that came out of uh, the southern rock tradition but the southern rock tradition was steeped out of, out of the um, some of the guys who crossed over and jammed with black artists in the rural communities, mm -hmm. um, right? So, so like I really found a place as an American through be, being able to be myself. So that advice my grandfather gave me was like the most important advice that I use to this day. Um, and I mean, it was a few years ago he passed away, but man, it, it was su such a tremendous shaking to have a foundational member of my um, my my life believe. Yeah, in a, a unique message that I was about to put out to the world, that really gave me a lot of confidence to shape shaped it. And so, so we I, in my shows, I like to do um, a gospel song, and even on my albums that I put out, I'll have um, you know I have some older recordings of me and my granddad singing. So I like to include uh, my granddad in my shows like that too. That's amazing. <laughs> I love that so much. I want I want the granddad like that. <laughs> um, I, I guess it's probably a weird ask, but uh, I, 
I love it. So I'm going to put on Craigslist. I want a granddad that's perfect. You know, hey, man, there, there is wisdom. I have a kind of, I won't say a de facto um, or a, a proxy granddad. So my, part of my um, process of shaping as, as an artist was now that I'm out here saying I'm making Appalachian soul music, I better like learn, I need to go, I need to go down this rabbit hole, it goes forward and backwards, right? So, um, you know, now that I knew that there were all these musicians in the past um, that did this stuff, there was an artist that I worked with, her name is Lady D, and she is West Virginia's first lady of soul. Her, her home base is Beckley, West Virginia, and she um, decided she was going to dig down that rabbit hole going backwards for me. And not for me, but like she was being inspired by the past about the same time I was. And so she did a, she created a docu, or is in the midst of creating a docu-series. She's released the first two um, parts of it. It's called Those Who Came Before. And it's basically, she's going around to and finding these older musicians that are in like their 80s and 90s and, and 70s and ha interviewing them before they pass away and talking about what it was like oh during God. that time. Yeah. And so um, she, I was able to be, at the beginning of last year, she was like, oh, I want to interview you and talk about your granddad. And so she, I got to mention my grandfather, but she's been taking this around the state and, and doing some making trying to get more reach for it so and people th their jaws are hitting the floor because they're like i didn't know that and yeah. my jaw hit the floor because i didn't know that and essentially what happened was the interstate it was just like what happened to the rest of america like the bigger cities got bigger the smaller towns got smaller because the interstates came through and like Route 66 and all that, you know, it, but it's mm -hmm. kind of like that happened in West Virginia, but they brought all the interstates through the black communities. And so a lot of those integrated jazz clubs and nightclubs where people would go and play and where music was a common ground weren't there anymore. So honestly, that history of West Virginia, it, it reshaped the, the narrative of West Virginia um, in, into a, basically a drive through state that's only full of um, a certain group of people to the point now people don't even know that the, the level of diversity and inclusion that is available to you here in in the state and so so part of part of what i what i enjoy is kind of blowing people's minds too and i'm like hey i'm the Appalachian soul man i'm from west virginia here's my song west virginia hills and then they stand up and give me a standing ovation because it's like a just a song about a place where you're from yeah you know, everybody can relate that relate to that pride and, you know at least on some level you would be hated so, so nostalgia does play a role in there, but it's more of um, a nostalgic optimism mm -hmm. where you can say if there are some, um, something that we can learn from the past, like the good parts. So like there were inclusive moments, there were progressive moments, there were um, moments where love endured in the midst of struggle. There were moments when, um, when people knew that they would never see the labor, the fruits of their labor, yet they stood on the front lines. Like okay. for me, like when I think about um, the civil rights movement in rural Appalachia, I think, yeah, that's a story that's just not told mm -hmm. because like you hear about it in the cities, you hear about it on the front lines where it made the news, but everyday struggles of people in rural Appalachia. So I had to ask, I said, what was it like? And what I found was, the communities itself, like the black communities, were able to um, be integrated. So white folks could come to the black community. So the white, so the clubs in the music halls and the gathering places, where um, where a lot of that early music I was telling you about was invented, was because the black communities were accessible to the whites, but the blacks weren't accessible. The white communities weren't, didn't have um, accessibility for blacks, and so the values. A lot of the food, like the soul food, a lot of the um, this style of dress, a lot of the music and culture, a lot of the um, you know the the things that you would consider pop culture in America, you know what I mean, came yeah. from the other side of the town, right. the less desirable places to be, and and that's something we all kind of agree on, you know. Um, but but like knowing then then knowing that that's like my granddad. Definitely. And like the guy down the street named Al Anderson, who's a soul singer, 
um, and hearing his stories. And but like the perspectives of those individuals, they're not jaded. They're just like, oh man, you should have been there. It was everybody was there. We played with the best of the best. And that's like the energy I get. And I want to share that energy with the audiences, you know? Amazing. And you are, you have a spring tour coming up, correct? Yeah, man. We're, so, I mean, right now I do my, I like to do a pub tour and I do that during the winter where I um, go to the smaller venues and because people don't like to go too far from home. So I come to you in the winter time and I play your neighborhood pubs and it's a total blast. Um, I got that idea from Garth Brooks. He went around and only played like small shows, like one man um, guitar. Um, so I do that for about six or eight weeks during the winter time. And then in April um, 15th will be our official kickoff date of, of the For the Record. It's, that's the title of the tour. For the Record tour. We have a, we have a seat album release. It's coming out in July. Um, but we're also going to Brooklyn, New York for a least of all direct vinyl session where people can pre-order, um, you can go on my website now, go to aristotlejones.com. You can pre-order one of my songs and we'll cut up you a live, one-of-a-kind version of a direct to vinyl from our my guitar to the vinyl, to mm -hmm. your hand. You'll have the only copy of it. Um, and that's going to be in July. So so we have everything out coming out. So we're launching the For the Record Tour on um, April 15th. And that's with the... Uh, I'm the host and the house band for a, in Clarksburg, West Virginia for the Born and Bred concert series, where it's a show I curate and my band's the house band. And we, what we do, it's kind of like a variety show. Mm -hmm. um, we bring um, artists that have ties to West Virginia or West Virginia artists that are on the rise. We bring them in and we, um, we back them up, support them, give them full production in, in a big theater. And, um, and we're just... It's, this is the first one I've been involved with. We've been organizing, planning that. And so we'll have tons of content from that, but you can buy tickets for that too at my website. It's at airsettlejones.com. A really great band. This first show is called The Wonderful Women of West Virginia. Um, it features Hello June, who is a, a NPR slingshot artist. Oh. Um, so they're on the rise. Um, Annie Neely, who just is a fantastic um, folk um, and kind of like a What's the way to put it? She reminds me of like Joni Mitchell or something like that. Her voice, really nice. A little bit of half Joni Mitchell, half Janis Joplin. Nice. Um, um, she'll be performing. We also have Lauren Winans, who's a fantastic country artist. And she does a TV show in West Virginia where she interviews regional musicians. It's called 304 Today. Um, check that out. And yeah. then Holly Turkovich, who's like an indie rocker, kind of like an Annie DeFranco kind of like singer songwriter. And we'll be, my band will be backing up both Annie, or not Annie, but um, Holly Turkovich and Lauren Winans for that show. And that's on April 15th. And that's the official kickoff to our tour. And we have dates all over um, West Virginia. Um, we'll be doing dates in Pennsylvania, Ohio, North Carolina, South Carolina, um, and New York. So it's going to be exciting. Annie Pittsburgh? What was that? Annie Pittsburgh? And in Pittsburgh, yes, we're going to be in Pittsburgh. Okay. Yeah, but yeah we're doing, um, well, we can't, well, yeah, we can. We're doing, doing the um, Millville Music Festival. Um, yes, and that's on May 20th. Nice. Uh, Definitely PM. So it's, come see, it's Gap Park. It's going to be at the Gap Park stage. So they, yeah, so so that's coming up, man. Tons of really fun stuff. Lot, lot, and what's cool is we have lots of free stuff. For you guys yeah. just to come out and see us. Now there are uh, please come out to the ticketed shows because okay. the more you can come out to those, that really helps us um, get more shows. But, mm -hmm. uh, but definitely come out to the free shows too. You know, because we'll come to you. But you know, like as we grow, you know, movements start when people get behind something. Exactly. And, um, you know, what I mean, like I'm, I will definitely go out and support you and try to bring light to whatever cause that we can do here in Pittsburgh, West Virginia. Um, I, I believe in creating the scene that you want to be a part of. And I think if we all just add a little bit, then we have something to work with. And, and, and so in that spirit, like my granddad told me, be yourself, because mm -hmm. then, like, then we know what we're working with. You know, that, you, know you don't want to, you don't want to be a camel in the ocean. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Exactly. I'm, sorry, I'm just rambling now. You got me talking. No, that's yeah. great. And this is nice because a lot of the viewers of this, they're all going to Melbourne. Yeah. So oh, yes. everybody. I mean, like, Mr. Smalls is right there too, man. I love playing at Mr. Smalls. That was so cool. Man, that talk about like a really reverent place where I, I would love to go back and just like have just like a little bit more time. Oh, yeah. so oh absolutely. Uh, 
they um because the fact it was an old church man i, I was like here's what we're gonna do man i believe i know this is gonna be tricky if you're not really religious i think the holy ghost becomes limited to church sometimes like and i, I don't mean that in a blasphemous way i, I think we we all have the spirit of community and connection and i just mean so so a lot of times when you go into a church people are vibing on the same level and then they oh yes the holy ghost came down we're all connected but if you go to a concert or if you go to um uh, you, you know anywhere like a place where somebody you know being peaceful or theater like there's common focus mm -hmm. and like when you get in when we were there in mr smalls like everybody was like so locked into the show which was amazing. And you can check out the video on YouTube um, because it was just like, I was taken, like, honestly, as an artist on stage, I was like, okay, we're going to play this show. And then like, everybody was like, so into it. And I was like, oh, we get to have fun. And so like, we just did like this whole section of call and response and you could feel the rafters full of energy. And, you know, when it, they call, I mean, like that is just a place where you should go see music. It's a jewel in, Mill, in the Millville area and for Pittsburgh. It absolutely is one of my favorite spots out here. Well, thank you so much. We're so excited. So go out to the ticketed <laughs> events, guys. But we're all going to see at Melville too. What else? You know, with the last time we have, what advice would you give to anybody who wants to start out and do the things you're doing? In music, you know, man, I, I would say think about your audience globally. You know, I, I know be local, be be present in your community, help other people. And then think about your audience globally because, you know, man, it takes money. That's all. I mean, I'm not I'm not trying to be, um, you know, like like saying that like, like the work will get you there, the creativity will get you there, but ultimately it's going to take money for you yep. to get through life. So just because you're not selling where you're at now, doesn't mean that you don't have somebody else out there in this big wide world of people that mm -hmm. might be your your tribe so so man like reach for everybody and 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 use your um use your promotional strategy come up one have a promotional strategy for if you're an artist or business or whatever have a promotional strategy to allow yourself some runway to be creative um and then give yourself um enough respect to prepare you for your future. So if you think that you're going to be successful, if you determine you need X amount of dollars, then give, then go get that and give yeah. yourself that due. Like other than that, you're, you're expecting like it's something to magically happen, but you can create the future if you just determine what that is and then give yourself the resources. And and like, people are always like, man, somebody should give me some resources. If I only have some resources, you have a resource. You are your number one mm -hmm. resource. You have everything that you, that you, that you want people to believe in inside of you already. Unleash that. Yeah. Just be yourself and give yourself like that much respect for your dream you know i love it and that's so true that's <laughs> yeah I, I get preachy sometimes i don't mean to yeah. but, no, but it's true. Like, and yeah. i think that that's what holds a lot of people back is they're waiting for somebody to give them a resource but it's it's inside you it's inside I, you you know you know man like because trust me anything you want to do you'll do it, you know if it's important to you man like and i think that's the beauty of it like so if you want to make an album it's not impossible. You go ask somebody how they made an album. Say, how much did it cost to make your album? They'll give you an answer. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're not happy with that answer, if you don't, you're like, there's no way I'm going to raise, you know, $100,000 to make an album. You say, okay, well, I'm going to ask somebody else. So if, if, I'm going to ask somebody else. Yeah. What do you need? Then you start asking, how am I going to make $100,000? Like, you ain't got to chop the tree down in one swing. Right. You know, you just got to keep going at it and you'll get there on some level. And, and two, the, the second piece of advice I would say is look at your career objective. Um, look at, you know, like not subjectively. If you can look at your music career objectively or your art career, or your business, say, okay, man, if I set a goal to have this happen, right? Did that happen or not? Mm -hmm. If it didn't happen, what can I do to make it happen? And those give you those give you what's called flow. Mm -hmm. um, it breaks your big steps down into really small steps. 
And then like, and, and so you can keep restarting. Every time you hit a wall, you can calibrate, restart, move forward, calibrate, restart, move forward. But you don't always have to go back to the beginning because you can learn your lessons right. by just participating in your, your forward trajectory. So I don't know, that, that's, um, I, that maybe it's too deep, but I hope people no. got that. Like, just go through your dreams. Don't let nobody stop you. You know what you're doing. And it's inside you. It's, it's always inside you. It's inside you, but yeah. You, you, I don't know where it is. Aristotle Jones, if you don't know him, you're going to find out. Uh, <laughs> check him out. We'll have the links below. We're all going to Millville. Make sure you hit him up. Yes, he has a May 20th. Yep, May 20th, yeah, and I'm excited. We're gonna we're gonna meet you. AristotleJones.com. Um, sign up for my mailing list, and I don't, I don't know if people actually download music, anymore, but you do get a free download of my song West Virginia Hills when you sign up for my mailing list. So you can make my music your music. Hey, thank you so much. I can't wait to see more. I'm going on that mailing list tonight, and we'll make sure all the links are here. And we are so excited to see you. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you for having me, and have a wonderful evening. You too. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. I'll leave you don't want to jump up. Come here, buddy. I'll show you. Here he is. Oscar. There he is. Did you see him? Or was it just a big blur? Oh, hey, buddy. Boy, the puppy. Oh, hey, hello. He's all hiding right. from the drunk kid. He's being bashful. Oh, all right. All right. I'll stop recording now, but I wanted to see that dog. So hang on. <laughs>